Path of Exile is one of humanity's greatest achievements in RPGs. A few months ago, I didn't know a thing about this game. I'd only heard it referenced in passing by friends and coworkers as one of those, you know, intense games that only hardcore gamers are into, like EVE Online or Dwarf Fortress or something. And in some sense, that's true. PoE is by far the most complicated game that I've ever tried to wrap my tiny little pea brain around, but I've had a ton of fun trying. It took me over a month of casual play to get comfortable enough with just the crafting system alone to even attempt to craft an endgame item. And when I did, I accidentally destroyed my chest armor, which is the item that provided me with my main damage dealing skill, leaving me basically unable to play the game at all. At that point, I turned to YouTube for help, as I always do, and all I had to do was watch some hour-long tutorial videos on fossil crafting, essences, currency crafting, trading items, item modifiers, valuing items, oil enchantments, the mines, the atlas, fragments, washstones, map crafting, flasks, heist contracts, linking skill gems, the passive trees, the tendency trials, literally all the thousands of gear names, and the immortal syndicate investigation, which... I still have no clue what the hell is going on here. But now, I feel I'm finally ready to make a video on Path of Exile without making a complete fool of myself. So today we're going to dive into the audio design of this truly unique game and try to talk through some of the design problems that it might challenge a developer with. We're also going to make our own sounds for the game too, which I'm super excited about, but more on that later. Luckily for me, there's an obvious place to start with a video like this, and it's a 2017 article interviewing Path of Exile's only sound designer at the time, Andrew. Right away, he makes some interesting comments on his workflow. Andrew says, audio needs to be designed for a specific purpose. For example, death audio needs to be satisfying to hear repetitively, while idling audio needs to either signal a presence or contribute to the ambience. This is a very important point. Audio that just exists without a purpose or function during gameplay is really just needless noise. Keeping that to a minimum in a game as hectic as Path of Exile should be a top priority. He also mentions that having many of the same objects on screen at once means the sounds will need to be more varied for it to sound natural. Here's what he means by that. Imagine you're playing a game like Dauntless, where you kill one of these giant creatures roughly once every 5 to 10 minutes. You could afford in a game like this to only have a few death sound variations, because the player will never hear them in quick enough succession to really register that it's playing the same exact wave file repetitively. But in a game like PoE, or really any other game with lots of small creatures, you can't get away with that. You have to have more variation to sell the illusion. To illustrate what that difference sounds like, I designed a handful of damage sounds for this fake creature. Take a listen to what it sounds like with four different variations played randomly. Now here's the same exact play rate, but this time with 12 different damage variations instead of four. I've also added some randomization to the pitch and volume of each one. The more variety you have, the more natural and less digital the game sounds, because as we all know, in real life, a half-goat, half-man would never make the same death sound twice. When the action is as crazy as it is in PoE, you almost never have the luxury of thinking of a sound effect as just an individual entity, because it will be experienced as just one of dozens of layers played simultaneously in-game. Take a game like Doom Eternal, for example. When you lock in for a glory kill on an individual enemy, that moment can be designed fully knowing that that's exactly where your attention will be at that moment. Compare that to an experience like PoE where you literally have no idea where the player will be looking or what they'll be focusing on at any moment. Andrew also mentions in his interview that they've had emails complimenting the improvements of art and graphics in an area where the only thing to change was audio. It's so cool to see this theme come up in so many of the games that we've discussed on this channel because it just goes to show how much influence sound designers really do have on the player. Now, it's all well and good to say that a game could benefit from having lots of variation and all the good things Andrew mentions, but actually implementing those things is another thing entirely, and could become a huge problem if not done the right way. Let's take a look at some typical Path of Exile gameplay and focus on the core loop. Try to identify the broad categories of sounds that you're hearing, and what's driving your experience the most. There's one thing that's extremely unique about this combat mix, see if you can identify what it is. Did you hear it? I'll tell you more about that in a second, but the loop goes like this. Traversal, encountering enemies, combat, looting. And this entire loop can take place in less than a few seconds. During traversal, we have things like ambient sounds, player movement, music. Then we encounter packs of enemies, which introduce some aggressive creature vocalizations. Then the combat loop, which is the densest audio experience, bringing in player abilities, enemy damage taken, player damage taken, enemy death sounds, flasks, etc. 
And then finally we have the looting phase, in which previous sounds have mostly ended, and the game temporarily converts to somewhat of a menu experience, where you get time to collect the items you're interested in, and move to a new location, initiating the traversal phase again, and restarting the cycle. The thing that I think makes this combat mix so unique is that the player's weapon abilities are extremely quiet during combat. This is the polar opposite of most modern games where your weapon is the most important sound. It's what gives you that moment-to-moment -moment feedback and makes you feel powerful. But in Path of Exile, it's the opposite. Enemy hit sounds and death sounds are the real star of the show here. And even just listening in isolation, the main abilities sound quite simple and subdued. This is a really awesome strategy. Highlighting the sounds of enemies taking damage is an even more direct way of communicating to the player how effective they are in combat. When the volume dies down, attacking a certain part of the screen, you've killed those enemies and it's time to move on. This creates a kind of gory symphony where the sounds of exploding flesh ebb and flow with each combat loop. Again, a mixed decision that would not work with most games, but feels right in Path of Exile. Just for fun, and to illustrate it a bit better, here's what a game like Modern Warfare might sound like with the mixed philosophy of Path of Exile. Mixing is something that we talk a lot about on this channel, but the act of mixing itself isn't the only way to mix. That is to say, volume and EQ aren't the only thing that we can change when dealing with a game that sounds too busy or too muddy. Concurrency settings are another tool that's essential for a sound designer, and sometimes I feel they're even more important than mix settings. Concurrency can be called many different things, instance limiting, culling, playback limiting, but it really all means the same thing. It's a mechanism that prevents too many instances of a sound from playing at once. Mixing is how we control the volume that a sound plays at, but concurrency settings are how we decide if a sound is allowed to even play at all. Let's use the example of enemy death sounds. In just a fraction of a second here, the player kills dozens of enemies on screen, and the last thing we want to do is play 50 enemy death sounds all at the same volume at once. It would sound horrible and cause performance issues. This is where concurrency settings come in. Let's say we implement a global cooldown or a retrigger time of 0.1 seconds. This would mean that at the very most, this sound is allowed to play 10 times every second. Right away with just one setting, we can eliminate some of the nastiest phasing and playback issues in our mix, but we can make it even better with a few more tweaks. Let's also set a global maximum instance limit of four. We never want more than four of this sound playing at once, no matter what, and we can even get more granular by telling the audio engine exactly what to do if four are playing and a fifth sound is triggered. We could, for example, prevent all new instances of a sound until an empty slot becomes available, or for this particular situation, allow a new instance to steal the playback slot of the oldest instance. So for a situation like enemy death sounds, some thoughtful attention to concurrency settings can take us from this to this and help us prevent things from getting too busy in the mix while also making sure that new sounds are ready to play if things get hectic. This whole concurrency technique isn't exactly mixing in the traditional sense, but without it, no amount of volume tweaking would make the game sound good. All right, now it's time we had some fun and made our own sounds for Path of Exile. One of my favorite features in PoE is that you can actually create and import your own loot drop sounds. This isn't even my voiceover anymore. It's a custom sound that I assigned to Chaos Orb drops. This isn't even my voiceover anymore. It's a custom sound that I assigned to Chaos Orb drops. This isn't even my voiceover anymore. This isn't even my voiceover. This isn't even my voiceover anymore. It's a custom sound. This feature is almost begging our community to come together and create a cool pack of sounds to use. So here's how it's going to work. Anyone can make and submit a sound for any of these loot drops. Export your new design, name the file of the loot drop the sound was designed for, followed by your name, and email me the WAV files at poelootdropsounds at gmail.com. I'm going to compile all the sounds and listen through them with some of my close friends whose opinions I trust on matters like these, and we will decide which sounds we like the most for each category, and then at the end of this month, I'll reveal on the Patreon which sounds made it into our final sample pack. The pack of eight sounds will become part of the normal Patreon sample pack rewards, and I'll include instructions on how to import and use the sounds in your own PoE game. But if you're not a member of the Patreon, don't worry, because whoever sounds we select to win will get access to the first three tiers of the Patreon rewards for free. Get creative and submit as many sounds as you like. Can't wait to hear what everyone comes up with. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.